Well, it is usually difficult for any government, and specifically governments that is democratic, like the United States, to try to balance these type of phenomena. That is, on the one hand, the United States as a government cannot dictate to any individual what to say, what to do, how to say it, and how to go about it. That's, the, that's constitutionally, every American has that right. Of course, it is also, by and large, is left to the discretion of the individual. That is, an individual who feels responsibility, uh, you know, if you adhere to the laws, for example, of traffic laws, there's a reason that curtail your freedom, but you adhere to the, to the laws because it serves the interest of the public as well as yours. The problem here is that the perception of the, uh, those who have been insulted by what the video is suggested by the cartoons that have been subsequently published in, in France, is that many of these Arab societies have never experienced really democratic form of government. And from their perspective, the government can dictate actually to the people what to say, what not to say, what to publish and what not to publish. And so you have that cultural divide. And that is where the problem lies. So. This is why the government here in the United States cannot really, as I said earlier, suggest precisely what to do or not to do, but it must leave it in the final analysis to the individuals. But the job that government is responsible also to do, however, is that to indicate its position, that is, promote the idea in a variety of ways that it serves no one's purpose to insult other religion. Specifically, when you talk about Islam as a religion, it's more than just a religion. It is a way of life. It is a culture in the Arab world. And insulting the Prophet Muhammad transcends just that insult because they are insulting a whole nation. And that is why you see the rage that has taken place throughout the Arab world and some Muslim states. You always have people who are uh, hypocrites, demagogues, uh, racist in every society, be that in the United States, in the Arab world, uh, in Europe, else, and, and elsewhere. That is a given. And, and these people uh, live and they will continue to live in both free societies and otherwise. So you have all these bigots in one form or another. Then again, you have to ask yourself the question, what do you do? You incarcerate these people, you put them in prison, or you're still going to have to leave it to the individual discretion. And that is really very, very difficult to say that you can do A, B, C, or D to prevent this or that from happening. But we should take this case in particular that happened just recently and make use of it. That is, when something wrong of this magnitude take place, the United States rightfully condemned the, the, the video, but it should also go beyond that and advocate a policy. That's not a policy as much as projecting what is the moral standing of the United States in this regard uh, and, and how we should be able to continue to walk the high moral ground by showing a great deal more of tolerance to other religions, to other beliefs, just as much as we want the Muslim to, be, to, to tolerate uh, Christianity or Judaism for that matter.